Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing very well. So we're continuing with our combined arms tutorial showing how to use the different vehicles. And today, today we're looking at the mighty SA-15 Tor. It's a real beast. I mean, it's an ugly looking thing. I mean, look at that. You're having a look at it. If you didn't know what it was, you'd, have, you'd think it's a transport vehicle or something. And what it actually is, is I guess a low to medium range, you'd call it a SAM system for us, uh, eight SAM missiles. Uh, having a look at the vehicle, we've got here is the search antenna. It's actually kind of two separate antennas, it's kind of hard to look at. This flips up, uh, it's just down for transport. It flips up and then spins around and then um, and, and emits and receives. Uh, you see this little extra antenna on the top here, it's kind of angled back. Um, I'll show you when we're in game. I think, uh, I stand to be corrected, I think that's to increase the azimuth to kind of look upwards. Um, because this vehicle is very much about, is one of the few vehicles that I can actually shoot, aim and shoot upwards. Um, that is a massive weak spot above the vehicle in many other of the of the kind of small sounds. So that's that. Then we've got what well, I'm, I, I stand to be corrected as ever, but my understanding is that this is the track antenna. So this is the thing that's actually going to track. This will uh, change um, aim, azimuth, the turret will aim and it can deflect up and down to trap the target. And most of the stuff about the SAMs, I haven't had a chance to uh, research these properly yet. Uh, most, so most is what I'm learning from you guys at the moment, which is great. And I think this guy here is an optical tracker. So in real life, and in, probably in DCS, if you can't get a radar lock um, on a target, then um, it can go to optical tracking here, I guess a bit like a, um, a Tunguska. But I'm not convinced that, that part of it's modelled in this, in the SA-15 and the SA-8 OSA, which has the same kind of video camera type thing. Uh, I've never seen a SA-15 or an OSA fire without a radar lock, So, and you can't do it in Kabayam Arms either, you have to use the radar lock. So I think it's Possibly not modelled, correct me if I'm wrong, but that's my understanding of how it works. And the missiles are kept in the turret, and they're kept in this thing, flips open, and they shoot upwards. It's really cool. So that's that. It's a big old vehicle. Let's go through the stats. Its name is a 9A331 Tor SA-15 NATO designation. It's a low to medium altitude SAM system, crew of three, which is very low for such a big vehicle. Engines, V12 diesel, 740 horsepower, the max road speed, 60 clicks per hour, 40 miles per hour. Fuel distance, 500 clicks. Dimensions, I haven't got the weight, that's annoying. I'm going to guess that is 30 to 40 tons. It's a big mama. And we've got the armament, I don't know if it says 2 times 4, but 8 total SA-15, 9 mic, 330 missiles. Uh, so that's it, so let's now go out of here. And let's go jump into the game. I'm going to pick a tactical commander slot, Bosch. Okay, we're going to click on our guy here. We're going to click on the this guy to take charge of him. Let the uh, let the things go up, and get into place. And there you go. You can see the ant uh, the the search antenna spinning around there with that kind of elevated secondary antenna that we've got there. We've got the hatch open for the eight missiles to come out. We've got the track the track antenna. What I believe that is, and the video camera optical guidance thing as well. So, like I said, a real funny looking thing. So, let's go through our usual stuff. Adjust controls. These are the controls for combined arms. It's under here in combined arms. There's about 100 of them, which is, I know it sounds a lot, but it's not. For DCS, it's, it's very easy to learn 100 controls, and most of them you'll never even need to use. These same controls are used throughout all of the vehicles in combined arms module, so it's super easy to remember them all. I'm not going to go through the, all of them now because otherwise the videos would be super long. I'm just going to go through the ones that we're going to um, actually be using to uh, uh, use the vehicle. So first, as ever, we're going to look at the views we can have. So F1 puts it inside the vehicle. Pressing insert toggles between outside control and inside control. Inside or outside control with insert. The mouse will move the turret about. Note how slow the turret moves. It is modelled on the real turret rotation speed. And out here, I can move the mouse, but the turret lags behind, you can see. And we can move with the mouse up and down. I have to say also, the controls that I'm going to be using are the standard controls in DTS. I've not um, adjusted any of them, and that's what I'd suggest you do as well. Okay, next view is aircraft view, the nearest aircraft target view, F2. Move that about with the mouse cursor and scroll it. Next is F7 view, sorry for the noise. Uh, F7 view put us out here we cannot control the vehicle the camera now moves around the vehicle and we can zoom in and out the scroll wheel 
Uh, next, we're going to drive the vehicle, so we're going to press F1, and we're going to uh, use W to go forwards. Uh, sorry, we're not in gear. We need to put in gear. X to go into drive. W to go forwards. S to brake. A to turn the hull left. D to turn the hull right. And if we want to go backwards, we're going to go Z to neutral, Z to reverse, W to go backwards. S to brake. X to put it back in neutral. So next we'll look at the screen telemetry. So if I just bring my cursor up here, we can see we've got our radar display here, currently set to 25 kilometers, uh, if you like, visual range of this scanner here. This is a top-down scope view of the radar detection. You can see you've got one guy there, you've got one guy there. The range here can be changed with the uh, controls that, that are in the adjust controls. We've got here the heading or the uh, you know, the heading of our hull is 236 currently. This here is the heading of our turret, so it's turned left to the hull slightly. And we can see our north position is there and our B sweep uh, line will be sweeping around here. So let me just unpause that. And that is tallied up with our rotation of our antenna here for search. Next, we've got our AI commands, not relevant when we're driving the truck. Well, actually, I guess technically they are. If we are the leader, then any um, other guys in our group will conform to these, which is formation column and ROE hold. But we're just a single uh, unit group today. Here's the ammo we've got left. We've got eight times nine mic 331s. I think that's meant to say 330, but whatever, it doesn't matter. Uh, gear, it can be reverse, neutral, or drive. Speed in miles per hour azimuth of the vehicle hull in degrees here we've got the uh, the turret rotation compared to the hull compared to north here we've got the health points of the vehicle uh, you know what state it's in and here we've got the heading tape for the turret so if i were to move the turret around whoops let me turn cursor off there we go you can see that so that's that te telemetry now let's look at actually using the vehicle to shoot stuff down which is the fun bit so there's two ways of doing this we can do it from this view here or this view here which is works the same or we can press a right control and f10 and we get this view here let's quickly talk about this so here is our top down display so we can change the range of the scan or the view should i say and you can see the b sweep here uh from the antenna search antenna updating him position it shows the position of the contacts we've got a bad guy there got a bad guy there it shows them their vector but no other information about them until we try to ascertain a track on them so to ascertain a track let's say i want to track this guy here i'm going to unpause i'm going to left click on this guy here you see that line there turn to him that's the turret the, and the tr uh, subsequent track uh, antenna which is the big you know dishy thing on the front there turning to face him and that will now track him until i tell it to untrack which i will use with the backspace key if i want to do that so let's unpause that and the turret is now going to follow this guy around and we've got this information here the hostile speed altitude distance azimuth time to hit and our current ammunition state here we can turn our radar off if we want to press a mission it will turn our radar on and off if we want to hide from seed missiles here is the fire button if we want to fire we cannot fire until these green lights are illuminated that will be done automatically uh, if we attain a lock which we'll do automatically once i've clicked him assuming he's in range then this will go green and this will go green then we press the fire button so let's just see if that happens he may not be in range i'm not entirely sure okay it takes a few seconds so we're now locked and we're in range so we'll now have a pop at him it's the missile gone let's take a look at him so you can see he comes straight up from the turret like that Turns. The beauty about that is it allows us to hit targets above us more or less, which, like I said, is a real weak point for um, other than the kind of low to medium range SAM. So let's see if we hit it. Uh, by the looks of things, he was putting chaff out and it's being fooled by chaff or something like that. Imagine that's what happened. Or it was just out of range. He may have been slightly out of realistic range. I don't really know. Um... So that's that. That's firing it from the. Then that was right control F10 to get to that view. Let me try and do that again. F1, right control F10. So that was driving it from here. But that's the boring way. We don't want to do it from that. We want to do it from the F1 view. So what I suggest is uh, F1, then insert to get outside here. And we're going to go and track a target. So we're going to break the lock on this guy by pausing backspace. I'm going to find the closer guy. So let's try and find him. We can look on our uh, radar search at the top left to find him. We've got him. We're going to hover the cursor above him and press the return key. 
Now look at the bottom left, it says acquiring target, it takes about 8 seconds and tells you his current range. And pause. Gotta wait till we've acquired the target. We've now acquired the target and you can see his brackets have now gone red so we're good to fire. It says that what vehicle he is on the left, his range and is in range. So what I'm going to do is add a little bit of uh, manual lead then left mouse button to fire. So there, fire. Not much you can do about that. Thump. Oh, lucky swine. Um, I was probably outside um, optimum parameters for some reason. I don't know why, but um, we'll try it again in a minute. It's difficult, actually very difficult to hit these guys when they're flanking like this quite fast. Let's try again, shall we? Let's try that. Fire. Maybe I'm not giving it enough lead. I don't really know. Oh, got him. He's going down, sir. Break the lock with backspace. Look for that other guy. There he is. Look, I, can, I don't know if you can see him. I can kind of see him. Press return. Getting a lock. Bit in the sun glare here, so you'd have to just take my word for it. I'm going to give him plenty of lead here. And fire. Missed. Fire again. in the face. Uh, so that is the FSA 15 Tor. It's a really, really, really good piece of kit. It must be one of the best SAMs out there, uh, radar guided SAMs out there, and easy to use for the human as well. Um, what else do we have to show? Right, so we're going to show it using AI controlled now, so quit. Fly again. So we'll start again now. Tactical Commander. Okay, fly. Click on our dude here. You can see his formation is currently um, a column. We can change that, but he's only a single unit group, so it doesn't matter at the moment. His ROE is defaulted to hold. We can change that to return fire or fire. So let's click fire, and he's going to start firing at these guys soon once he's got a lock. The state could be in green and red or auto, and we'll leave that in auto. Uh, restrictions we've got here. We can change the maximum percentage of range, of maximum range that he launches at, if we like. We can turn his radar uh, antenna off, turn his emissions off here. We can tell him to engage air weapons here or not. And we can apply the changes to the group or just him. And we'll set path in a minute. Let's just let him have a pop at one of these uh, flankers. I'm sure he'll start doing it soon. There's a missile. That's an SA-15 Gordon. And he's missed. And again. And he's got him. Uh, so that's that. If I want to make him move, and I think he can fight and move, we're going to press set path here. We're going to press left click here, left click here, left click here. At the end of the route, I'm going to press right click. He'll set himself going. And I'm going to put the speed up. Off he goes. Let's go and have a look at him. Uh, it appears we've upset him for some reason. Um, that's weird. Let's try again from scratch. Um, we'll leave him uh, ROE hold fire this time. See if we can get him to move. Left click, left click, left click, right click. And... Miles per hour. It looks like it's going to work now. Let's see what happens when we... So you can, if I speed that up, it's travelling. Let's see what happens when we put him on fire. Yeah, it looks. It appears that he, can, he can't multitask. He doesn't look like he can fire and move at the same time, which is probably why he didn't fire last time. I stand to be corrected. But that's that. Um, that's all I want to show with the awesome tour. I hope you enjoyed that. See you later.